Welcome back to Mobile High School Broadcast Network. Here it is. We got episode one, part two of the podcast. So here we go. We're gonna have to get a name for it first time. We definitely will. No, we'll leave, we're gonna leave this in there, but we're we definitely name for it. But okay, this time we're gonna be talking a little bit of college football. It's as we mentioned last time, we're Malden, South Carolina, we're located, so football really runs deep in this area. Football is basically religion. There's Southeast. there's Jesus and then there's College football. That's that's the order. That's yeah. about it. A Chick-fil-A right under that too. Okay, so this is what we got. So we're going to talk a little bit about last week's games. We're filming this on Monday. Fort State and Virginia Tech have yet to play, so that's going to be a huge one. But we're going to start off. So the one we saw last night, Sunday, Miami versus LSU. Yep. With, it was tail two halves, but man, that LSU leads better. Leads better. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely what you have to go with. SEC definitely was lights out this weekend. And by, by the way, we're Clemson fans, ACC fans. It kind of hurts to say it, but the SEC, no SEC doubt. They look, like, they look like the best conference in football this week. This we, week. We'll see how the rest of the season goes. But I think the biggest thing, though, is when you look at that game, unless you look league better in the first half, Miami got it going a bit in the second. But I think the biggest thing was the quarterback for Miami, uh, what did you do, right? He, he struggled a lot in that first half. Just controlling the offense was the biggest thing for me because the defense looked solid. The Miami defense looked solid for a lot of it because you look through the first quarter, it was 3-3. Three, three. And then all of a sudden it's 27-3 at halftime, and it just opened up a ton. Yeah, I think, I think what really happened was was Malik Rozier for, for uh, Miami. He, he, Stat-wise, he had a pretty solid game. He was 15-35. And he had 259 yards on those 15 completions, which, I mean, that goes out to 7.4, averaging per, per completion. But I think it really came down to finishing because he definitely, he definitely got the stats there. But he threw, he threw two interceptions. He did, he did throw for one touchdown, but that came in the second half. Like we said, it was a tail, tail of two halves. Um, uh, and uh, LSU went into halftime, I believe it was 23-3. Or 27 to 3. I'm sorry, that's what happens. But uh, it, uh, Malik Rozier, he, he just couldn't finish. I guess that's, that's the I point I'm trying to make. He couldn't finish. This LSU defense held him. Yeah, I think, but I think the biggest thing is, like you're saying, <laughs> he did struggle finishing, for sure. Um, but I, he didn't have as much run support as he probably would have wanted. Was, and I think the early on, you got to give credit to the LSU defense. They were, they were all over the running game. It really made them more one-dimensional. And I think that's really tough when they, they haven't won in a while. Because you look back to last season, they lost to Pittsburgh. In the second last game, no, the last game of the regular season, then they lost to Clemson in the AC Championship game, lost to Wisconsin in their bowl game, in the Orange Bowl that was in Miami. And they lose this one, so that's four in a row. That's, it's just really tough for this team because when you're a quarterback, you got a lot on you. Real quick, i I know I don't know if you remember there was a guy Jacob Eason, okay, was the Georgia quarterback, and he was recruited by Mark Rick to go to Georgia, and he kept transferring, and I was kind of shocked he didn't go to Miami because I think he could have done a great job as this quarterback, no doubt about it. Because when you look, yes, Kirby Smart's the quarterback now in Georgia, but when you look back, he the reason Jacob Eason went to Georgia was because of Mark Rick, the coach, how he coaches the team. He was a great guy, and he's still doing that in Miami. And, I kind of wonder why he didn't go there, but nonetheless, it was you got to give credit where credit to LSU looked amazing. Their quarterback, they finally have a quarterback, Jake Burrow. I, you can't even talk enough about him. He did a great job in the game. Whole lot of credit. Their running back finally getting the reins. Can you imagine Nick Brissett? Yes, he uh he had 22 carries for 125 yards of that game and two touchdowns. Definitely an all around amazing game from this this rushing unit. Uh, the total unit had 156 yards. Well, the biggest thing though is. He was the backup for Leonard Fournette. Then he was the backup for Darius Guy. So he never really got his moment. I feel like now he, he did, and he really took advantage of it. So now another one of the big games it was game day. South Bend. It was Michigan and Notre Dame. It ended up being final score 17-24. Michigan actually did have a chance late in the game. 45 seconds, they got the ball back. Almost similar to Baldwin versus Hillcrest. They got the ball back. Didn't have... A lot of time to go. I believe they didn't have a timeout. I'm not really sure. I think no. I think they had one. They're trying to move the field. 
And what a really strange game. It looked like Notre Dame really dominated in the beginning. But it was weird. It was dominating because, like we said about uh, Miami game, is they finished drives. That was a big thing for Notre Dame where Michigan wasn't. No, you're, you're, the biggest thing was, it was almost, because when you look, we have the stats right here. Brandon Wimbush and Shane Henderson, yardage wise, are very similar. It was the biggest thing was finishing drives. And it was yeah. the big key throws when you needed them. Shane Henderson made them when he was backed up in his own territory. But the biggest thing is, I think he is the quarterback, though, for Michigan still. No doubt about it. I think that was a huge step up. They're going to be good. But it's got to really hurt because a lot of people are questioning Jim Harbaugh now. Is the biggest thing, and I, I'm Shane, honestly, I'm a believer. Shane Patterson definitely had a, a, a solid game. He he threw one interception, didn't throw any touchdowns. All the touchdowns came from the rushing unit. But Notre Dame, Brandon Wimbush definitely had a game. He had he was 62.8 QBR that game, which is for compared to what else happened this Saturday. That was probably one of the best performances that we had. Oh, and you got to remember this Michigan defense against the well, Saints. Yeah, they, uh, they one of the best performances off. against against a ranked team. This is one of like the only better games of of this weekend, and he he came out with sixty two point eight. Brandon Bush, Brandon Wimbush, uh, threw uh, twelve for twenty two, one hundred seventy yards, had one touchdown. He did have one interception, but I think definitely a better all round game for him. He had fifty nine yards rushing, so I think he he definitely. Well, big thing when you look last year, he seemed to force a lot. When he would almost panic a little bit, it would almost seem like the moment was a little too much for him. And it was a lot for him. You know, there was a lot of high expectations, especially when you're at a big prestige program like Notre Dame is. But I think the biggest thing was, like I said, when the throw needed to happen, he made the throws. So, uh, and and Michigan, they definitely struggled to run the ball. They had. 33 attempts that came out to a whopping 58 yards. So, I mean, that average that averaged out to 1.8 yards, I believe it was. But it really shows how this Notre Dame defense held them to the passing game. Michigan, or excuse me, Notre Dame was a lot better all around. Uh, they threw the ball well. They rushed for 132 yards altogether. Uh, I think I think they just had an all-around better game than Michigan on both, like, on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I... The thing is, the, the worst part about it is Michigan had such high expectations. We look, they were looked at as maybe a number two, number three defense in the country, and then everyone's saying, oh, Shea Patterson's the fix. He's the guy. Jim Harbaugh's never had a quarterback. Now he does, so they're going to be amazing. And I feel like a lot of that almost, almost started to get to them. Their defense did look good, no doubt about that, especially in the second half. They really limited Notre Dame overall, but the biggest thing is the offense is going to have to do a bit more moving forward, and especially when they get into that Big Ten play, right? Because Big Big Ten's a really tough conference to play in, especially when you look. They're on the same side. They're similar to the ACC. How Florida State pumps in only one of them can go to the ACC championship game. Only one of them, Ohio State or Penn State, can go to the Big Ten championship game because they're all in the same division in that conference. And that's, that's got to be really tough on them moving forward. But I, I think they're going to be a very good team. The last game we're going to highlight from week one, is going to be uh, number six Washington against number six Auburn. Uh, uh, Auburn would come away from this game twenty-one to sixteen. Uh, I think you know this game. It really came down to. Um, it came first half was definitely a lot, a lot more exciting than the second half. I will say that second half was definitely mm-hmm. not not as much there. Well, I think the biggest thing is the offense settled in. They figured out what the offenses were going to do. Auburn's defense looked outstanding. Jared Stidham looked crazy good. They their running game looked solid. I think overall Auburn just it's just playing simple. They played better football game. So we're gonna try to get moving. So here we go. We got a little bit. We'll talk about the teams first off that just played. First off, we got some over under win totals for some of the teams. We'll start off. Miami was set over under win of ten. They need to play twelve games. And they're starting off 0 one So that's, that's going to be a tough one to reach. For me personally, I'm going to go with under four. They, they do have an easier schedule as it goes, but they, they got it tough. I think this year in the ACC, I think it's definitely going to be over. I feel like over, it's definitely going to be hard to be over. Maybe at 
you know. It, it, it'll be close. That, that's it's it's going to be close. That's, that's definitely one of the harder ones to pick. I'm going to say, of course, it's the first one as well. Yeah. I'm going to say a tough one right off the bat. But how about this one? This one kind of shocked me. Although we know because after they won, but LSU said it's seven for over under for wins. Of course, they are playing the SEC. They have a really tough schedule. But seven wins? I think at least, at least, especially after how they looked in that game, I think they're not in the football team. At least. Well, I, I I have to put it as I have to put it as over, but um. Well, I mean, let's just check the schedule real fast. They do have to play Georgia. Of course, they do have to play Alabama. They play Auburn. So that's three really tough games. And you cope that with Florida and Mississippi, I believe. They play Ole Miss. Yes, they do play Ole Miss at home. Playing in them. Really tough games at seven. I think they could sneak out at least eight or nine because they're going to have tough games. And actually, uh, the Alabama running back, Damian Harris, actually said that LSU is the toughest team to play. They, they show up every single Saturday. They're going to hit you hard every single time. That That's just a really tough one for me. So we got we got to go to it. we got to mention them. There we go. So, of course, being in the state of South Carolina, we're close to fans, but we'll mention that other team in the state. University of South Carolina set seven wins is the over-under, so we'll pull up the schedule. It's, it's, the thing is, they are in the, the East, they so it's a whole lot easier. But it's not easier schedule. Easy. You know, I was looking at the schedule not too long ago. I think, I think it's going to be over, because I do have to give credit to South Carolina. They have, with... Um, they're, oh, they're really new program. They really yeah. like Muschamp. They really like the quarterback they got over there, Bentley. They they got a lot that they like is the biggest thing in with, my opinion. With Jacob Bentley, I, yeah, I think they've definitely come a long way in the past couple of years. I think that they could actually pull out over seven games. I mean, their their hardest game their hardest game is Clemson and Georgia. Other than that, I feel like they have a shot at every game that they play. Oh, uh, no doubt about it. No, doubt. And, and it hurts today, but no. Okay, another one we got to mention. Our favorite team, of course, Clemson Tigers. 11 wins is the total over under. You could, you could even say even with this one. I think. Like, but it's scary because they, oh man, Clemson does not have that hard of a schedule. Not not even close. But you hardest, look, hardest game is, is probably going to be, they, well, they play FSU. That's their only. On the road. That's on the road. On the road. On the road, FSU is probably going to be the most difficult game. That's the only, as of right now, that's the only ranked team that they play. I feel like South Carolina has a chance of sneaking into the rankings. With oh, I think South Carolina will be ranked, no doubt about it. And I think NC State's a sleeper team that will get up there. They're going to be in the twenties range, no doubt about it. In my mind, I think North Carolina State is a legitimate team this season. I just had to say that. I just had. To. Okay, and then we will do one more. Or one of the big ones, the game we're missing this week. They're playing today. Florida State, That's as we mentioned, they're going to be probably the biggest game Clemson's going to play all season. Of course, also South Carolina as well. But they're set seven and a half. Seven and a half for Florida State. Oh, what do you want to pull up that schedule real quick? I feel like that's definitely pretty reasonable for them. Because DeAndre Francois, coming back from the injury, didn't play a lot last season. He's, you have to see how fresh his legs are, how, how well he's going to throw the football. If he's going to be what he was two years ago, I think he's going to be the dual threat that he was. Well, he'll, he'll be good, no doubt about it for me. And they have Cam Akers, too, at running back, I think. I think they'll go over. I'll just straight up say it. But they have one of the tougher schedules in the ACC. When you look at it, they start off Virginia Tech. Yeah, they start off Virginia Tech. Go on, they play Miami, who is, as of right now, ranked, just lost to LSU. Uh, they play Clemson and Notre Dame. Those are going to be probably the toughest games on their schedule, other than uh, NC State and Florida. NC State is one of those teams, though, that bothered Florida State. Yeah. They, they beat them. They, when it's in NC State, and we can say this, Clemson fans, when Clemson plays on the road against Georgia Tech, it's always a stressful game. That's how it is for Florida State when they play against NC State. So... Those are the big over unders for me, and then, and I, that that's a that's about it for all that we have to cover from week one of the college football action. Uh, we'll be right back to you with week two uh, analysis of games that are going to happen, uh, predictions. 
So we'll be back with that for our next episode on the Mullen High School Broadcast Network. Thank you for joining with us, and we'll see you back.